He's a video circulating of the useful idiots in and around college campuses uh, promoting Hamas are somewhat entertaining. Yeah. I, I have to say some of them are, are very entertaining. I mean, to, to, to display how ignorant they are. It's useful, for example. And it's not just the kids. Here's some 60s refugees, some old leftists who's walking around uh, downtown with a Palestinian flag trying to remember what she's supposed to chant, and she gets called on it. Funny, you don't, you don't look Palestinian. From the nation to the sea, Pal Palestine will be free. From the nation to the sea? No, from the uh, mountains to the sea. From the mountains to the sea. Oh, that's what, that's what we want. That's what we want, yeah. From the mountains to the sea? Yeah. Which mountains? You don't know, eh? Idiot. Yeah, you are a blanking idiot. Um, I like this, though, too. Some of some enterprising um, Jewish students yeah. have uh, quizzed, have, have used the uh, graduation ceremonies, those that schools that are actually having them, as opportunities to quiz some of their classmates. This is uh, one of the better ones I've seen, and it wasn't limited to a particular college. Uh, this guy went around to, um, he was in the Northeast, of course. Let's see. What you're going to hear is the Gaza graduation game show, uh, interviewing students from Sarah Lawrence, oh, the oh. alma mater of One Tiny Dancer. Let's me get out to my tutu. Yeah, um, uh, all girls school that he went to. Uh, Sarah Lawrence, Pace, Montclair State, Rutgers. You know, not a single one of those schools. Less than fifty grand a year. These are our best and brightest. Welcome to Gaza graduation. Let's see how much students actually know what they stand for. If you get them right, you win $100. First question, have you guys chanted from the river to the sea? Yes. Okay, which river, which sea? The sea of... Oh. Oh. So you don't know? Oh. You don't know. Oh. No. And the answer was the Mediterranean and the Jordan. What does Hamas say their number one goal is according to their charter? They just want to free Palestine. To murder all Jews around the world. How many years did Israel occupy Gaza? Late 1800s, the entire time. That's since 48. It was actually uh. under Egyptian control for the oh, first wow. 20 or so years. And then Israel actually left Gaza in 2006. I'm shocked. Wait, they left? What is the definition of Zionism? Doesn't that mean you like hate Palestinians, right? Jewish people who think that Judaism is the highest race. Zionism actually just means that you think Jews are entitled to having their own homeland to protect themselves from another Holocaust. You don't even have to be Jewish. That makes you a Zionist. Okay. What does Antifada Revolution mean? I don't know what that means. But you've chanted it? Yeah. It's like a global call to murder Jews. Wow. Wow. Did you know you said that? No. Would you say it again? Probably not. How much have our foreign adversaries donated to American universities in the last decade? No idea. I couldn't give you a number on that. The answer was over six billion. How many Gazan refugees have the Arab neighboring countries let in in the last few months? Thirty-five thousand. Uh -huh. The answer was zero. Look, you asked an education major about about. <laughs> Students don't seem to know what they stand for. So wouldn't it be great if these expensive colleges actually taught them something? It would be. Uh, one of those expensive colleges is Northwestern, my alma mater. Oh boy. And um, they disgrace themselves yet again. Anytime Northwestern is in the news, what happens? The value of your degree goes down. Correct. And it's happened again. Michael Schill, the Dickensian named president of the university, uh, leading the disgrace and maybe the illegalities at Nor that occurred at Northwestern. And I'm not talking about the uh, civil suit where they're being uh, sued under title six for their deal with the negotiation team for model hamas uh, on the campus in evanston of dedicated scholarships for Pal palestinian academics and so forth i'm talking about um, violation of federal law as it pertains to the reporting of crimes on campus this is a story that comes to us from tony Kinnett, who's an investigative columnist for the daily signal and a radio host at WIBC in Indianapolis. Tony, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. So um, so tell us how we can put Michael Schill and others in federal prison. Well, you uh, might not have to do it yourself because he's actually appearing before the House Education and uh, uh, Committee on the Workforce this morning right. because of these issues. But, yeah, these violations of the Clery Act, which came about in 1990 when a private university in Pennsylvania tried to hide 
murders happening on campus, you know, just everyday stuff. Um, Northwestern is very much not allowed to order its private police force to uh, not report crimes or misreport crimes, you know, like changing assault and battery to harassment or vandalism to <clears throat> administrative notice, which is one of the new ones since the article dropped. But Northwestern, it looks like, decided they would do it anyway. You know, what's a couple of felonies among friends? And so, so that, I mean, what you're describing is, is what they did. Those are specific examples of the crimes that they misreported. That's correct. At least three crimes that we have found have been misreported. At least six or seven crimes at this point were not reported at all. And those are just from individuals who are willing to go on the record. Uh, so whereas when I wrote the article, it looks like they had violated the Clery Act at least five times. Now it looks like they may have violated it at least 12 times. Um, and by the way, Liberty University, uh, who only had three Clery Act violations, was hit with a $14 million fine back in March. So we'll see how Biden's Department of Education actually, you know, takes this Clery Act seriously. Well, is it, is it for the Department of Education to investigate solely or if it's a federal criminal matter? What about the FBI? Well, the Department of Justice should get involved, especially if crimes were not reported at all, especially given the assault and battery. The Department of Education usually determines if the Department of Justice needs to get involved over the Clery Act violations. It was not clearly written when the Clery Act of 1990 was established, because back then these were kind of common sense things. You know, the Department of Education would confirm, then the DOJ would begin a full investigation. Uh, but now, again, under the Obama administration and then under the Trump and Biden administrations, the Clery Act has gotten a little bit muddled. But the violations are pretty clear by any objective standard. So one of our listeners was with John Brickman, who was standing off campus when the American flag was stolen. And they tried to get you know, Northwestern police and Evanston police to, to write down or to make a police report. And that didn't happen. So what about his case? So that's one of the most egregious situations that I saw. And Deputy Officer Eric, or excuse me, Deputy Chief of the University Police, Eric Chin, standing there, uh, was told by several students and, and individuals there, hey, the, the flags have been stolen. And it's like 15 yards away. He's in that tent. We have seen him. And Chin just looked at him and basically said, uh huh. And they're like, aren't you going to do something? And he said, no. And so then you actually had an ABC7 cameraman go up to the officer and show him from the camera. This is what ha I have the whole thing on camera. And he's right over there in that tent. And at that moment, the guy who stole the flags walked out of his tent holding both of the flags. I know that, you know, you don't usually see American and Israeli flags in the middle of the encampment. And they're like, hey, please go get this. This flag flew in Korea. It's my father's. It's a family heirloom. And Chin just said no and referred him to Evanston police, even though the crime was currently occurring on campus, which, again, violates the Clery Act. Did he ever what? get the flag back? He did four days later. Again, no official police report. Uh, we're told that the head of the campus police brought the flags back, but there was never any report filed. And again, that's also yet another violation of the Clery Act. Uh, the, the weirdest situation, though, is that Chin appears to have texted someone in the city of Evanston that he was taking a report, which is not true, because it appears that he never did. So we might have to add lying about filing a report, which is, you guessed it, yet another violation of the Clery Act. Do we know if uh, there were any stand-down orders given to campus police by the uh, Northwestern uh, administration or uh, a stand on order from the Evanston police by the chief there? So in, in, in the interest of, of being completely transparent, do we know for sure? No, but, and the, the comma but here is kind of important. We do know that based on multiple videos that we have received, that police officers were refusing to take any kind of police report or were refusing to uphold campus policy and law. Like, for example, you're not allowed to have a bullhorn and yeah, your protest and shout things right next to the officer. If there was someone with a bullhorn, he would refuse to do anything. They would refuse to uphold any campus policy. And they would say it's, quote, above my pay grade, quote, and, right. quote, we follow the chain of command around here, end mm -hmm. quote. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Right. So that's. 
probably, I mean, I, I sort of assume that, but obviously you've got to prove these things out, particularly if you wanted to uh, criminally prosecute somebody, you want to prosecute the shot caller. Um, because, you know, like you were mentioning, Liberty University getting a $14 million fine. I mean, $14 million bucks. Uh, Open the Books has a report out on Northwestern this week. Northwestern University has received more than $4 billion in government contracts and subcontracts just in the last six years. So, you know, for all that, yeah. that report was incredible. Right. So, so 14 million, 20 million, 50 million. They got an $18 billion or $15 billion endowment. They got, uh, you know, 4 billion in contracts uh, over the last six years from the federal government, various agencies, HHS, National Science Foundation, DOD, Education Department. So, you know, you, you can't get them in the pocketbook. You have to make an example of some university president. And boy, I, it's been great to see some examples made of university presidents in terms of the political pressure to step down and exposing them as plagiarists. But wouldn't it be fun to see one who actually, if they did break a federal law, be prosecuted uh, for breaking federal law? Now, I can't go into too much detail, but uh, if I if I were, you know, having a, a semi free kind of morning, I would watch the live stream of the House committee. You've got Jim Banks from Indiana. You've got uh, Fox from uh Carolina, you've got a lot of, let's just say, invested uh, representatives who are not going to let Schill just walk away from this, because Northwestern is one of the more egregious cases of bowing down, capitulating to Hamas in the country. So, and those are just some of the things that we've reported on already. There's far more junk that we're discovering in a Freedom of Information Act request between the city of Evanston and Northwestern that makes things look even a little worse. I mean, uh, one of the officers referring derogatorily to the counter protesters, the pro Israel protesters and kind of soft handing the pro Hamas anti Israel protesters. It's, it's really just wild. Well, I, I can't wait for shill before that committee because he is a soft, uh, I mean, he is a putty faced, soft handed, simp he is not going to hold up well <laughs> under under scrutiny i'm telling you that right now he is weak. apparently he's been seeking legal help already i'm sure oh so that's oh. which is incredible well what about at depaul university because that encampment was up for 20 plus days so again the the issue around a lot of these situations really rests with the department of education which allows these protests to be classified as protests they're not protests by any legal definition on the books Breaking the law, rioting, vandalism, uh, breaking and entering, intimidation, entrapment, those are not protests. And do you know that, well, you should know that the United States very clearly defined what was and wasn't a protest during the 50s, 60s, and 70s. So when you have an organization, especially whether it's at DePaul, whether it's at Indiana University, whether it's at University of Wisconsin-Madison, whether it's at Northwestern, who is putting in place these encampments and calling it a protest, it's not the legal definition of a protest, but as long as the Biden administration is allowed to soft hand the terms over to the Department of Justice, very few things are going to be comfortably handled. The benefit is that next year, say if a different president were in office, it's not like these universities can grandfather in that someone else called it a protest. There is no statute of limitations on the bureaucratic organizations that the president holds power over. Well, uh, in uh, Illinois vernacular, Tony, uh, here's hoping that uh, Michael Schill becomes a justice impacted individual. Oh. Uh, <laughs> That's our new name for convicted no. felons. Uh, Tony, yeah. Tony Kinnett, investigative columnist for The Daily Signal, radio host at WIBC in Indianapolis as well. Tony, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Thanks. Stay safe up in Chicago. Thank you. And he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. Listen to Dan and Amy on your smartphone. Download the AM560 mobile app today at 560theanswer.com slash mobile. Hey, business owners, are you wondering how to grow your business? Do you need cash flow and a ready source for financing?